Hey everybody, Joe Burnich here with Big West Marketing. Once in a while, I have a guest on my channel. This time I got Paul Sanneman. He is an expert when it comes to finding employees for your service business. So I'm bringing Paul in. He's going to give us a ton of free tips, free information. And he's also going to show you guys what he can do for you if you're looking to hire this out. So Paul, take it away. Okay. I'm going to talk to you about how to hire your ideal employee, okay, and the, and how to keep them. Basically, how do you build a winning team? Because that's the most important thing in construction is building a winning team. I think Elon Musk is famous. He's really smart, but he knows how to build teams, right? So it's a really good trait. Look at myself. I've been doing this for 40 years plus. Um, I've been a business coach for 40 years. And about three or four years ago, I started a recruiting company because my clients couldn't find anybody. And now we have about 25 people on the team. We run about 400 job ads every day. We hire 10 to 15 people a week. We have like a 90% success of good hires. So I think I figured out the formula on how to do this. You know, have to do it, do it yourself. But we, I know the tricks on how to actually find all the good employees, okay? But first, I'm going to go through some myths that get in your way of hiring the ideal employee, okay? Um, let me go back for a bit. So what's the definition of the worst employee? In my opinion, the worst employee who is someone who's not bad enough to fire and someone who's not good enough to keep. They kill organizations, right? If they're bad enough to fire, it's easy. Boom, they're gone. They're good enough to keep you in love with them. It's awesome. It's the purgatory of the people in the middle that kills organizations. And that's what we're going to figure out how not to do, okay? Here are the six myths of hiring that I think are going to get in your way of recruiting effectively. The first myth is, only recruit when you need someone. That's people think, oh, I don't have to hire until I actually need someone. Second myth is employees are expensive. Oh, I can't afford that person. I have to get the big job first before I can hire them. Third, we can do it ourselves. How hard is it recruiting? Put down indeed, call the guy a week later, you're all good. Fourth, recruit within the construction industry. Unless the guy or woman knows construction, I'm not interested. Next one, hire fast, fire slow, hire the guy, if it doesn't work out, I can wait six or seven months to let him go. Next, recruiting is a project that ends. My experience is that most people think these are true. And I'm going to try to prove to you they're all not true. And that's the purpose of this webinar. And then I'm going to go a little bit into how we recruit, the best practice to show you how. And then I'm going to a little bit about AI and how you can use AI to do it. Because ChatGPT has made it a lot easier. So the first myth, you only recruit when you need some. Look at a sports team. Professional sports team are always recruiting to build their teams. They never like stop, right? So you can't think of any team that has not that hasn't been recruiting all the time, right? Next, successful contractors have multiple subcontractors in each field. Most most contractors don't have a problem with hiring good subs, but and having two or three in each category, but they have a real problem with looking for somebody when they already have somebody working for them. Next one, only recruit when you need someone. The primary function of an owner is to build a great team. Contractors should focus on building a team as they focus on a project. That's a problem. To achieve this, you must always be recruiting, not just when you need someone, but you must have a recruiting plan. A successful contractor actually has a recruiting budget, but unfortunately, most contractors I deal with don't have that. So you should always be recruiting. Don't hire out of desperation. The typical contractor We'll go, oh my God, I got the big project. I need a project manager. I need somebody right away. They end up with a bad fit. They get blindsided by somebody who leaves. So I call it give races bike back. Man. We've all had that, right? When the guy comes back and says, not me, it's my wife, but um, I need another 10 bucks, I need another three bucks an hour. I have to go to competition. Do hire slow, grow it on your terms. Be prepared with the next player on your bench. Ensure a good fit. These are the things you should do when you should always be recruiting. Next. Employees are expensive. The more employees I have, the more overhead I, ha overhead I have, and the more work I need. The reality is the more employees you have, the more money you will make. The guys I know that are making the most money obviously have the most employees. You can't make money without an employee. Employees are worthwhile investment. You know, delegate and elevate. This is the traction book. I, he, Gino, he suggests this also. You can't do this without talent. Increase your capacity by creating bandwidth and supporting your growth and have people to take on the task. The most valuable asset you've got is your employees. They are not expensive. 
They're the best investments you ever make. I got no problem in having a contract. You'll go out and buy a new truck, but trying to get and hire a new person, it's very challenging. So employees are worthwhile investment. They attract better clients by expanding your network. They attract better subcontractors by hiring subs that have connections with experience. Improve your operations by bringing someone on board that may have great ideas for your process. There's always room for the right guy, okay? Um, for example, if somebody comes along who has a lot of projects and a lot of subcontracts, you're going to hire them. The next one, we can do it ourselves. I hear this all the time, like no problem. You're only as good as your team and successful contractors should stick to their strengths like managing projects. Most of these guys don't fix their own computer. They have subcontractors, but some reason people think, hey, how hard is hard? To me, it's the most important thing you can do in your company is build a great team, yet they think they can do it themselves. And I run into this all the time. Why would you not take, you know, most subcontractors, like they don't do their own marketing. They have CPAs as a bookkeeper, right? They don't have any problem with that. When it comes to, you know, getting recruiting, they think, ah, oh, ad indeed, I'm done. So just like plumbing and electricians, a specialized trade, get somebody that knows what they're doing. You're going to get a way better team and have a way more effective company. So recruiting is a complex process. It requires specialized skills. Success recruiting is a full-time job. I mean, when we put somebody on a team, there's usually four or five people on the team. The successful recruiting process must be done daily. You can't wait for this one. If you have your office administration do it, have her do it one day a week. So and especially today's competitive job market, you cannot put an ad in and wait a week later. Um, these are the 10 ste successful steps to recruiting. Um, and I'll go the, on our company how we do this. But first, you can write I, a can I Can I can I interrupt right. real quick, Paul? I got right. a question because a lot of the guys that I work with are are kind of starting out. They let's say it's a husband and wife team, and maybe they have a helper or two. Um, how early in the game, if you're a, a new business owner, should you start implementing the stuff that you're teaching right now? The day you start your business. Okay. Cool. Because okay. you're only as good as your team. And even if you're a guy in a truck, you know, I heard this, you know, if you don't have an administrator, you're the administrator, right? And you're pretty expensive as an administrator. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, start immediately because as you build a company, your ability to build a team will determine more than anything else your success, that and marketing. So okay. write a job ad that attracts the right candidates. Chat should be made a little easier, but you got to write the job ad. You got to post it everywhere. Post it on, on a monster, all the billboards. If you have to put a you know staple in uh, Home Depot, I mean, put it everywhere you can. Don't just put it in Indeed and end it. We put it on like 100 job boards, plus LinkedIn, plus Facebook, plus all those places. And we don't even search those databases. Next, I can't respond as soon as possible. We, I, I, we have a project we hired, I think, 300 carpenters in like four months for a large uh uh, framing company out of a thousand people. We literally did everything in Spanish. When someone called, we we're back with them in two to three minutes. Wow. Because these people have a very short attention span, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you've got to, re you know, right away. If you, it's sort of like if somebody calls and says, you know, I need some work done, you're not going to call them back a week later, right? It's the same thing. So literally, we try to do it within hours at least. We have people all over the world to do this. So when an app, if you got something in your office, I don't have your phone on 24 seven. When they, you got to get back to them right away. It's crucial. Initial phone screening, do a video interview, you know, find who this person is. Next one, critical, detailed skills and behavioral assessments. We can show you how ours work. There's a bunch of them out there. There's just profiles, there's behavioral stuff, cognitive stuff. You can learn all about this person before you talk to them. And are, most you gonna show, are you going to show any of that today? I know you. I, I will show it to you today. later. I'll show you ours because it blew my yeah. mind. Yeah, it blew my mind how deep you can go into someone's personality before you even talk to them. But yeah, anyway, right. go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, so go ahead. make sure you've got a great assessment because there's stuff you can't tell in an interview, and then you get the world's worst employee and it'll just kill your organization. Do in person or Zoom interviews. Conduct background checks. I had a guy literally that hired a woman to do his accounting who was fired for embezzling in her last job. Wow. He got embezzled too, by the way. Not a good idea. Call references. Make a competitive job offer. You know, you, you can look on Monster and Places, find out what the market is, offer a little above the market. You're never going to The chances are who you're looking for already has a job. If they're not, they suck. 
So you got to, you're trying to recruit from somebody who's already working. So you got to make it a competitive job offer, especially in today's market and ensure a successful onboarding experience. Not hello, here's, here's the thing, get to work because you, there's no second shot at a first impression. So you've got to people make people love your company as soon as possible. Okay. So this is what you need to do if you can do it yourself and do it right. Next, recruit within the construction industry. This has got people in trouble all the time. While construction's boom, other ten, you know, industries like entertainment have tanked. There's a lot of opportunities. Who people are is way more important than what they know. You can fix, you know, you can train anybody to, you know, swing a hammer, so to speak, but you can't train them to be a good person. Hey, that's that's something you can't fix. Okay. Hey, Paul, I'm going to, I hate to do this, but your cursor is covering up the title and I just didn't want it to do it any further. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Next, find exceptional talent outside the industry. Um, I'll give an example, the wedding planner example. Okay. Um, we had um, during, at that time during the pandemic, but still true, the, the, uh, the entertain the we call it the uh, wedding planners and that industry the whole you know industry where your hospitality is tanked right and they don't pay very much so think about a wedding planner okay a wedding planner has to get a bunch of rather marginal companies together the band the flower people all those people right and they're not the most dependable people in the world they she's got to have them show up to a one venue it's all got to work and everybody needs to be happy to me it sounds like a construction job right and so that talent you can convert a wedding planner to a construction coordinator like in a week and they're less money they work great and they want to do that because they love that process so make sure you just don't look at the construction industry hotel manager is a perfect skill right we had a guy managing 10 hotels now he's managing three construction companies he's killing it also, you can train people, you know, people I like can't find electricians, I can't find plumbers. get the right person, have a training program, get somebody out of another industry. There's some large construction companies that will not even hire people that have training in construction because they realize they're hiring a project manager to show up for a job, but he has the yellow pad and a pencil, been doing it for 15 years. You're not going to change his mind, You're not going to give him a computer He goes, I can do it my way. So sometimes hiring out of the industry is much better because they'll do it your way. Don't be stuck on this one. It can cost you money. So attitude and ability are more important than experience. You can train for skills, but you can't train for ability. Who they are is way more important than what they know. You can always fix that. Training is the key. You know, add a, add a training to your program. Try to bring in good people and then train them to do it your way. Because resurrection is harder than birth, guys. I tell you, I've had some people, you've been a project manager, you do the same thing for 10 years, 15 years, and you're trying to convince them your way with your software, it's tough. So go outside the industry. That's important. Next, hire fast and fire slow. So this is what a lot of people do in this industry. They hire out of desperation, impulse. They, you know, they hire a bad fit. And what happens is they need a project manager yesterday. They put an ad in D, the first warm body, that sh warm body that shows up, they go, well, he has some experience, give it a shot. Very expensive. You know, the guy that who the, the wrong employee can cost you 15 times that salary, at least maybe in this in the construction, maybe it's only 40 or 50 thousand dollars. That's huge, right? You can hire a, a recruiting company for that for years, right? So it's like, don't make that mistake. People don't understand that hiring the wrong employee is huge. So hire fast and fire slow is a myth. Do not do that, okay? The most important decision you're gonna make is the kind of people you hire. Next, one of the things of hiring fast and firing slow is that it's horrible for morale. Let's say you've got a really good team, right? You're desperate, now you've got a project, you just won the project, it's you know a new home and it's whatever, a million bucks, you need somebody yesterday. Some guy walks on the door and says, hey, I'm gonna hire him, he's got some experience, we're good. He's the worst employee because what happens is he shows up late. He doesn't tell the truth all the time. Like with somebody that's only lies 10% of the time, you never know when the 10% is, right? So you can't ever trust him. Um, so what happens is he infiltrates your company, right? And all of a sudden starts killing it because employees go, well, he's late. I can be late. He drinks a beer on the job. I can drink a beer on the job. He's messy. I can be messy. And so what happens, it just kills your company because it lowers everybody else's standards. You hired him because you needed him, 
But let me tell you, if you, you got to get rid of this guy tomorrow. It's just not a good idea. But lots of times that's insidious and you can't realize how much he's wrecking your company until you get rid of him. And usually that's way too late. Okay. So we get back to the applicants really quick. Then take a week or so to do your due diligence. Don't like, oh, I need this guy. We need to do it. We got to take the time to hire the right people. Again, you're only as good as your team. So do not hire fast. Do your due diligence, walk through them, introduce them, you know, maybe interesting people in your company. Make sure you're hiring the right person because the wrong person can be a disaster. Okay. The worst employees, something not, I talked about, not bad enough to fire, good enough to keep. Now, just think of the employees that work for you. I have a, a good test that I do. You think of all your employees, all right? Now you're going to start a new company. The question is, if you started the new company, they're all gone, who would you rehire back and who would you not hire back? I personally believe that anybody that you wouldn't hire back, you should fire. Mm. And because, you know, emotional and, and like a marriage, it's easy to get married and hard to get a divorce, right? We've all been there. Not all of us, but a certain percentage of us have been there, right? So, you know... Do not do that. I'm telling you, take your time and do it right. So fire fast. Don't tell right bad employees. It's much easier to fire a performer if you've got somebody to take their place. What happens if you're not recruiting all the time? That you keep the guy or woman on because you haven't got anybody to replace them. And, you know, a bad employee is better than not employing at all. And I would disagree. A lot of people think that. Cultural misfits are worse than skills misfits because they just kill the culture of your company, which is the most important thing you own. So you need a good prior assessment, determine who they are, who's a good fit. All this you need to do. Do it right because you have no idea how much it's really going to cost you. So again, the guy that did Netflix, he's a smart guy, right? Obviously, he's done well. He wrote a book called No Rules, Netflix, and the Culture of Innovation. Teams are demand excellence. Excellence. Every position is the best position at a given time. Train, play to win, continuous feedback. Effort is not enough. So if you've got a great team, like we have a great team all over the world, but I, I know the team is on it and they're doing a great job because of who they are, because they can't fix them. I can't audit them. So it's important that you have an awesome team and you have a standard that everybody meets, okay? The next one, like a project, recruiting comes to an end. For a construction company, they treat everything like a project, right? Everything has a beginning, has a middle, and has an end. The project mentality does not work for marketing recruiting. You don't start it and then hire them and quit. You should always be recruiting. Recruiting is a continuous process. And a lot of contractors and people in this industry have that, oh, recruiting, I'm going to find, you know, John Doe or Miss Mary, whatever her name is. She's going to hire them and then recruiting. Doesn't work though. It's like stopping marketing because you get a big job. Okay. So just like you should always be marketing, you should always be recruiting because nothing is more important than your clients and your team. I've been in this industry for 40 years, and I will tell you, it's an easy industry to be in if you've got a great team and you've got great employees. And also you have great clients. So if you're marketing all the time, you've got great clients and you've got great employees, great industry. But if you're not marketing all the time and you have marginal clients, you take jobs because you have to, and you hire employees because you have to, this industry can really be hard, okay? Next one is abundant mindset. You know, you need to be willing to modify your staff to stretch for the superstar if they come in. And you won't find the superstar because you're always looking. A lot of like general contractors you work with, like say a remodeling contract or they build in homes. What happens is they say, I don't need anybody right now. I said, well, I got a guy who happens to live in your town. He just quit your competitor because... For whatever reason, he had a disagreement, perfectly legitimate to read. He knows every architect that matters in your industry. He knows all the subcontracts you really want. He could probably bring you $3 million of business the day he starts, along with all the people to do that work. You don't want to hire him? I don't quite get that, right? So there's always room for the right guy. But unless you're looking all the time, you will not find them. So let's recap the six hiring realities. If you take this mindset, you're way better off. One is always be recruiting. Always be recruiting. Employees are worthy investments. They're not an expense. Next, outsource your recruiting. Admit that you're not great at it and get somebody to do it that is great at it because you may have way better employees. Next, find exceptional talent outside the construction industry. They are there. You just have to look for them. Don't limit yourself to just construction because you're going to pay more and get less. Next, hire slow and fire fast. 
That's important, but you got to have a bench to do that. And next, unlike a project, recruiting is an ongoing process. You don't start and stop, okay? So if you want to learn more about our, our website is Contractor Staffing Source. Now I'm going to go out of this and I'm going to go into something else, okay? So do you have any questions so far, Joe? Not really. I mean, I've I've made all of those mistakes as far as the 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 myths you were talking about. I right with my business alone, and you know, I'm not even in the construction industry. I've made every single one of those mistakes over the past fifteen. And years. they can be expensive, as you know, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> I and mean, mental and mental anguish, years. and also financially. Okay, so right. th this is our system. It happens to be our applicant tracking system. That is a way of tracking all the applicants and stuff. There's a couple of things that we do, I think, are important to do. One is, if you look at the employee tab, we put all our people on this tab, okay? So this graph is a way of showing how good your team is. For example, on here, you've got culture fit, and on here, you have performance. So somebody who is a great human being, but they can't sell or can't you know, hammer a nail goes over here. Somebody who can't do either goes here, and somebody who's over here is... They're, you know, they can sell like crazy, but they like cheat and steal. So you got to have everybody in here. And the goal is to get everybody from here over to here. If they're out here, you got to find a new person. That's why you should always be recruiting to find if they're there. Okay. The next thing I'm going to show you, you know, what what a good ATS does if you're looking for. I'm going to go to switch company. This happens to be somebody recruit for, but I'll show you what you need to do. Okay. Um, Let's see. Let me do it. Just to clarify, this is this is your program. That if somebody was going to work with you, they'd they'd have something like right. this. Um, so I'm going to give you one of our clients. So again, there are other ATS. We invented our own, but there are other ATS systems out there. But you need to have this because it's sort of like you know using a hammer instead of a nail gun. It's like or using a a shovel instead of a backhoe. It just makes no sense. Okay. So I'm going to go to. Cronkite Homes, which is a client of ours, and just show you how this works. Again, you, you can do this yourself, but get an ATS. There's a, there's a, there's a bunch of them out there. We invented our own because we didn't like the ones that were out there we could work with. So what happens is like when we place it out on the ATS, you place it on an ATS, it goes to 180 job boards, something like that. It goes to LinkedIn, Facebook, any place on the planet you want to put it. We happen to recruit in every city in the US and Canada, but it goes to all those places. Then when people come in, I'll go new home sales consultant, they come into the ATS and you can look at them every day. All right. So make sure if you're recruiting, there's applicable, there's a bunch of ATS, but doing it that at ATS is like digging a hole with a shovel. It's just stupid. You, it's way too much work and they're not that expensive. Okay. You want to write a job ad, right? So rather than trying to figure out, you just go to chat GPT and say, um, I am a construction company in Des Moines, Iowa. Real quick, let's I tell people what chat, some people may year. not even know what chat GPT is. I it's need to hire a project manager who understands co-construct software. Could you please write me a job ad? Yeah. I want to make sure people know what chat GPT is real quick. Just a real rundown of what. Chat okay. GPT. Um, it's sort of electricity and like electricity and fire. <laughs> it's yeah. it's good. It's going to change the way the world works. It's artificial intelligence applicable to everybody. And what it does is it searches the entire planet for this information and then puts it at your desk. If you don't have ChatGPT, just get it, all right? There's, a, there's several AIs out there now, but I'll show you. Okay, so here we go. So what happens is it's gonna write, the, here's the job ad that it came up with, okay? So this is always a great price to start, right? It shows you where it came from, what you need to do. And then you can say, well, maybe I need a, um, these are all the sources. These, this is all the thing that's searched, right? To get the answer. You can wow. say, okay, um, I, I need, let's see, who's somebody you might hire, Joe? I'll put, I'll put a job description for you. So I would hire a somebody who can do sales and customer service for a web design and marketing company. So I need a job description for someone who can do sales and uh, marketing for a web design company and has skills that they can actually do websites on their own. Good enough.
Yeah, it's so, amazing. It's amazing. You know. So if you don't have this on your desktop, you're making a huge mistake. It's like I don't have electricity on my house, so I'll get by without it. Unless, unless you're you know, Amish or something, you don't want to do it. It's just crazy not to do that. So this has made it a lot easier. Um, now, ChatGPT gives all the sources now. It didn't used to do that. Now it does. And again, this was introduced in January of this year, and there's 150 million users. Some dumb number, right? Um, and so this is a tool that makes it easier. Because, for example, it, it, say you don't know what a key performance indicator is. A lot of people don't. That's Key performance indicator is something you need to tell the person is doing a good job, all right? And they're typical HR kind of terms people understand. So I'm going to say, just for fun, I'm going to say, um, I, it's going to be, I'm a, um, here we go, I'm go back here. Hold on, I can do this. Um, I am an HVAC service company, and I need key performance indicators that's KPIs for a um let's see a job service person somebody who's going to service HVAC in residential construction please write me three performance KPIs and three behavioral KPIs for this person so I can see if they're doing the job they are doing the job Okay, here we go. Now, I some people know what KPIs are, but somehow they do. So this is job completion rate, right? Average service time, first rate time fix, behavioral KPIs, customer satisfaction, adherence to safety protocols, continuous education, and using these skills. So these are the KPIs for that. It'll write it for any position on the planet, right? That just gave me some ideas. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> so use the tools available. You know, if you want to have it, I, I suggest you outsource it. I said you do it all the time. You can outsource it to somebody like us because it's way easier to have it done right than you do it yourself. It's like trying to do marketing yourself. It doesn't make any sense. But if you're going to do it yourself, make sure you have great assessments, use an applicant tracking system, and use, you know, chat GPT or AI, there's a bunch of AIs out there to write the job ads and do the work for you. It makes it really easier to do than it's ever been. And again, you're only as good as your team. So it takes, it makes total sense to spend time and energy building your team. That's the best asset you've got. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot of information in a very short time. I learned a ton. How do people get a hold of you, Paul, if they if they don't want to do this stuff themselves, if they want to get a hold of you, find out what it takes for you to, to work with you? What do they need to do? They can go to contractorstaffingsource.com, which is our website. Okay. I'll put that I'll on the screen. A... I'll make sure it's down in the description as well. People can okay. click down. There. I'll give them my personal cell phone. Here you go. For okay. Paul Sanneman, 415-599-9006. Okay. They can write me, which is paul at paulsanneman.com. And I'll be happy to spend an hour with them to tell them whether they should do it themselves or not. And if they've got somebody who's full-time that can do, I can show them, they, I can give them the tools so they can do it themselves. Maybe they just need the assessments. Maybe they just need the ATS. So I think it's worth a discussion with me because I mean, I've learned a lot in the last couple of three years doing this of whether to do it yourself or not and how to make that decision intelligently. So anyone want to call me, it's a free hour of my time. I'll be happy to go through the tools. I'll explain what you need to do if you do it yourself. If you're going to use us, I'll tell you how we would do it for you. But you need to be educated. And again, it's the most important thing you have with your team, not to spend time and energy on it. It's just not smart. And one more comment. Just think about if you are digging your holes with a shovel and your competition is using a backhoe, you're probably not going to do that great. <laughs> right? And yeah. it's pretty much like that. You know, the tools are out there. It's it's basically you know, it's all been automated, but if you just put an ad in Indeed and try to do it yourself, you're going to have real margin of results. I talk to contractors every day. The number one thing I hear is it's hard to find people and it's hard to keep people once I do find them. So this is valuable. This is gold. Guys, listen to Paul. He's He connected with me. I'm going to take this stuff and use it for my business. You need to do it for your business. 
Once again, I am Joe Burnett with Big West Marketing at BigWestMarketing.com, and I will see you in the next video.